Ten Dime Wadi be thankful unto the Most High, Mother, Father, Creator of the Universe, Kudzai Mozimo Mokoro. Give praises unto our great ancestors, Abibi Fahodie, African liberation, African power for all African people. This is Shakara and welcome to the very first edition of the Pan-African Question. Yeah, the Pan-African Question. And as you've heard, the first question is, are you a Pan-Africanist? Or more specifically, am I a Pan-Africanist? And I thought it would be important to start with this specific question because I understand that not everybody would be familiar with Pan-African ideology. And today there is a whole heap of confusion yeah, about what Pan-Africanism is and what it means and what it stands for and so on. So we're going to get into it a bit now. There is definitely a need yeah, for more definition uh, in today's world in relation to what Pan-Africanism is and what ideals it stands for, because um, I would be the first to say that it has been so watered down, watered down to the point whereby almost anybody and anything can claim the terminology and apply it to what they're doing. Um, and many people who have identified as Pan-Africanists yeah, um, have got to the point whereby they're questioning whether it, that we should continue to use the term. So to answer the question, Am I a Pan-Africanist? The answer is yes, but I am a very specific kind of Pan-Africanism. I am what is referred to as a Garveyite, yeah? Um, or as Marcus Mazaya Garvey defined it, African fundamentalism. I, I'm, I'm an inherent of African fundamentalism, i.e. Uh, black liberation ideology as expressed through the words, deeds and actions of Papa Garvey, Marcus Mazaya Garvey, and the UNIA ACL, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. Yeah, There are different types of um, Pan-Africanists, um, and that Pan-Africanism is often referred to today as Black Nationalist Pan-Africanism, uh, Black Nationalism, as, as I've already said, African Fundamentalism. Another prominent um, form of Pan-Africanism comes through the legacy of the Asajifo, Kwame Nkrumah uh, and Sekature. Adherents to that legacy would be referred to as Nkrumahist Tureis. There are many relationships between uh, the two, yeah? Um, but there are some differences, yeah? Um, whereas um, um, Papa Gavi or those who adhere to that legacy would be referred to Black Nationalist Pan-Africanists, um, the uh, Nkrumahist wing would often be referred to as uh, Socialist Pan-Africanists or sometimes today revolutionary Pan-Africanists, yeah? Um, and there's a reason why that their emphasis is there, partly because um, Nkrumah was key in clarifying for us what this thing called neocolonialism is, which around the world, our majority black nations are governed under neocolonialism. We'll probably do a, 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 a session on neocolonialism in the future. But for now, what it really means is that the political philosophy of majority African nations is governed by the economics yeah, of our former colonizers, the criminals uh, who had previously colonized us. And so we are experiencing neo-colonialism, which is not a substantive change in the world power order or the colonial system. So for an Nkrumahist, yeah, the Nkrumahist defines uh, Pan-Africanism as the total liberation and unification of Africa and all African people under scientific socialism, yeah? Now, when you see scientific socialism, this is an economic philosophy that goes against um, the neo-colonial order, right? S evidently, scientific socialism is heavily influenced by the Marxist ideology, okay? Then I'm going to give you an another definition now, which comes from a more nationalist, pan-Africanist or black nationalist, pan-Africanist leaning. And that definition is as follows. The total liberation and reunification of Africa and all African people and the establishment of one continental and global African nationalist government and a Ma'at Ubuntu world order. This is because the nationalist sensibility tends to reject socialism. Um, not necessarily because it is full of negative ideas, but because the black nationalist seeks to um, uh, uh, define and solve the problems of African people according to the culture and the experiences of African people. So for us, 
um, socialism or Marxism and communism are, are uh, ideologies that come out of European culture to solve the problems of Europeans, all right? So not to say that there's no good ideas there, but we don't define ourselves according uh, to those ideological dictates, yeah? We want to be able to create a situation where we're able to learn from our own culture and our own experiences and develop those ideals. Uh, so that's where terminologies like Ma'at and Ubuntu come into the in, into context because Ma'at being um, uh, uh, an ancient um, African now valley Kemetu um, terminology, which ref relates to concepts like truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. And Ubuntu is a terminology that speaks to um, peoplehood, yeah? Hu hu um, what some people would dis define it as humanitarianism, but that's, that's, in, that's kind of, it's too restrictive a definition, yeah? It's insufficient language, right? Uh, but it relates to human relationships and being uh, part of a community. As the saying goes, umuntu in the Zulu, umuntu ungabantu. A person is a person because there are people or I am because we are and since we are, therefore I am. So that term, Ubuntu, uh, gives expression to the dominant social principle within indigenous African life. And so it's about developing those ideas into a modern context in ways that will, we will be able to liberate ourselves and these things. Um, where this plays out primarily is the, the class versus race and culture question. The socialist or the Nkrumahist um, prioritizes or sees class contradictions as primary. Yeah. The black nationalist sees race and culture contradictions as primary. That doesn't mean, yeah, that the class analysis from a Pan-African perspective is absent a consideration of race. Um, and culture, and it also doesn't mean that the cult, race and culture analysis from a nationalist perspective is absent an analysis of class. The difference is that whereas the socialist sees class as universal in terms of the development of human society and therefore making the class contradiction primary, the black nationalist does not see class as universal. The black nationalist sees class as a product of culture. And even if class contradictions may exist in various societies, the cultural dynamic would mean that all class contradictions are not the same and therefore cannot be remedied uh, in the same way. But the, 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 the socialist yeah, says, well, actually, um, class is um, a, a fundamental aspect of the neocolonialist structure. And we have class contradictions living among us as black people right now, even though they say we are independent. The black nationalist says, yes, that is the case. However, those class contradictions are simply a byproduct of the fact that we have a European culture manifested in the political and economic systems that are used to govern us. So the class contradiction is simply an outgrowth or a product of the cultural contradiction, yeah? In other words, um, deal with the culture question and the class contradiction will take care of itself. The socialist says, not necessarily, yeah? We can um, uh, manifest class contradictions uh, among us indigenously as we may be able to identify that such contradictions may have existed uh, among us pre-colonially the nationalist says okay even if that's it's the case yeah um you know what i'm saying we should be able to use our own culture to solve those problems from our own perspective and not swallow marx and, and engels and lenin and trotsky um um as though you know, um, Europeans are the only people that can really um, develop economic and political theory, yeah? That's just a brief rundown of some of the debates that take place over the years. However, many people often overlook the extent to which there has been synthesis and learning, yeah? Um, um, you know, and those ideologies will come closer together over the years also. For example, and I know because I'm a born uh, black nationalist Pan-Africanist and I've seen the debates over the years, but it will be true to say that um, that from a, a black nationalist or cultural nationalist perspective, many of us have, have had to um, learn about the importance of having a definitive analysis of capitalism as an economic system and how it functions yeah within our own societies and and how the world economics is run under that system that that's a that's a fact that the socialists have emphasized that point and uh, many of us as nationalists have learned yeah of the importance of that point 
and what the nationalists has given, yeah, and the, the socialists have learned from the nationalists, whether they admit it or not, is that the, the importance of culture, yeah, as a defining factor within liberation and revolutionary politics, yeah. Um, that is a gift that the black nationalists has brought to the movement. Now, as a Garvey, there are many people among the Garvey, and so this is actually a very current debate, um, that say that we should not be identifying as Pan-Africanist, yeah? Um, there's a number of different reasons for this. Um, Pan-Africanism comes um, into its into formality, yeah? With Henry Sylvester Williams, the Pan-African Society and the Pan-African Conference of the late 1800s and the Pan-African Conference is actually 1900. Um, and they were basically concerned about the colonization of the African continent, um, the 1884, 1885 Berlin Conference, and they wanted basically to advocate on behalf of Africans. Africans around the world had an interest in returning home um, and uh, developing nationhood in that context, but couldn't because of the fact that Africa had just been fundamentally col basically colonized in its entirety by a conspiracy of European nations, yeah? Um, and so they were fundamentally concerned with decolonialism, decolonizing the continent. But for many people, yeah, especially given the fact that prior to 1900, we had people like Martin Delaney and Edward Wilmot Blyden and um, 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 Benito Silviano and David Walker and others, yeah? who had more radical ideas, more revolutionary ideas. Many people consider what um, Ed, um, Henry Sylvester Williams was dealing with in 1900 and many of them to be relatively conservative, yeah? very, very moderate. And there is some truth to this, yeah? Um, and a good breakdown of, of that is given in K. and the Andrews book, Back to Black, yeah? Um, have some debates with the brother, but his explanation of this particular issue is very informative in terms of the moderate nature of Pan-Africanism as it was de 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 defined in 1900. The other reason why a lot of Garveyites don't want to identify as Pan-Africanists is because after Henry Sylvester Williams, the person who stood at the forefront um, of, the, of the ideology that was referred to as Pan-Africanism was W.E.B. Du Bois, who positioned himself as an enemy of Marcus Mazaya Garvey and the UNIA uh, ACL, yeah? Um, and whereas he, he, in the conflict between Papa Garvey and uh, Dubois, Papa Garvey was very much against Dubois because, and, and considered him, many of the members of the UNIA ACL considered him to be an active saboteur of the UNIA ACL. And they had good reason for thinking so. Um, that's another another subject for another time. And also because Marco Bazzai Garvey did not refer to himself as a Pan-Africanist, they say that we should not be referring to ourselves as Pan-Africanists. So, um, I have some sympathy for the argument. However, the argument doesn't fully take into consideration, firstly, that one of the contributors to the development of Pan-Africanism was a man by the name of Dr. Robert Love, who was a direct uh, jegna or teacher of Papa Garvey himself, and he had an a, a influence in terms of how the, the ideology of Pan-Africanism, because he was um, in and around, yeah, the development of the Pan-African Association, Henry Sylvester Williams and the conference, all right? And Papa Garvey said this was a man who gave him a lot of his early teachings, yeah, um, in race consciousness. But also, since um, that time, yeah, 1945, the Pan-African Con Congress, um, the fifth Pan-African Congress in Manchester in the UK, um, um, there are many who suggest that at that point, that is when the Pan-African ideology caught up, yeah, with what Garvey was dealing with and the UNIA was dealing with. So we, so we would say, or some would say that Papa Garvey is the person and the UNIA is the organisation that gives Pan-Africanism its mass, organisational, radical, revolutionary characteristics, yeah? Um, and we say this because we understand how after 1945, with the catching up of those who were dealing with Pan-Africanism to what Marcus Mazai Garvey was saying, and also the popularization of the term Pan-Africanism um, through the Asajjah for Kwame Nkrumah, through Omawale Malcolm X, and the global black power movement of the time, through people like Kwame Toure, yeah? Um, the term becomes popularized to the point whereby it becomes an umbrella terminology, yeah? And so it is considered by some that to play with whether we're Pan-Africanists or not as Garveyites is akin to playing with semantics. 
And this might sound like a contradiction because I've already asserted, right, that we need more definition. But I don't necessarily think that um, um, playing with, trying to achieve greater definition necessitates, yeah, simply playing with semantics. And so I get both perspectives, but I don't necessarily, as a Gavi, have a rejection or a problem with the term Pan-Africanism. I just want to define the Pan-Africanism that I deal with more specifically within the realms of Gavi ideals. And being a member, a born and raised member of the Akebla Revivalist movement, this is how we define Pan-Africanism. We, we, we apply um, Gavi principles and themes, yeah, um, to the Pan-Africanism that we affirm. And those themes are Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. Look to Africa um, and one God, one aim, one destiny. In another video, we'll go into this um, a bit more, but you can see these are all statements and phrases and themes that were popularized within the context of Gaviism and African fundamentalism. And it really provides the spiritual, cultural framework yeah, for our Pan-African inclinations. We are connected. Why are we connected? Yeah, what connects us, yeah, in the spiritual, the ideological and the philosophical sense is this, is this idea of Africa being for us as African people, looking to Africa spiritually, culturally, um, uh, physically, politically and economically, and also being unified, yeah, in our spiritual outlook, um, um, our goals and our destiny, all right? These are Garveyite themes, yeah? So this is how a Garveyite who does not reject the term Pan-Africanist defines their Pan-Africanism. But then, this, what is nationalism, yeah? We have to look at that. So, man, black nationalist or nationalist Pan-Africanist or Pan-African nationalist. Nationalism emphasizes the ideal of nationhood. Papa Garvey was about nationhood, yeah? And so um, coming out of the al and Revivalist movement, this is how we define nationalism. A people building and maintaining autonomous nations and communities with institutions designed to promote, preserve, and protect African lives and culture by any means necessary. And this is important for us now because there are many people, yeah, especially that today, yeah, with that the, the, the African Union, and sometimes you're going to hear the term Pan-Africanism, you know, running around wherever it's going on with the African Union, yeah. But um, fundamentally, they are not about nation building, right? They are also not about challenging the, um, the, the world order in terms of neo-colonial power structures, yeah. They're, they're very much... Um, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, happy, yeah, to preside over neo-colonial nation states, right, that are not seeking to build a unified African nation. But it also emphasizes the fact that nationhood is not just tied to an area. You are a nation wherever you are in the world. It's why we emphasize continental and global, yes, the specific land mass, because land is important, it's the basis of sovereignty, but our nationhood and our nation concept is global wherever we are um, as a people. So we say that nation building or nationhood or nationalism um, is stands upon one fundamental principle, that's race first, yeah, Garviat principle, race first, which means race awareness and cultural emancipation first before all other considerations. And then there are seven essential principles of nationalism, which are proud heritage, self-governance, self-reliance, separatism, self-defense, land acquisition and repatriation. Asian, okay? So when we say nationalist Pan-Africanism, this is what we are referring to. And I, and I believe that that terminology define, crystallizes the definition enough that we don't have to reject the term Pan-Africanism. We also don't have to reject the term African nationalism, which is what pe the, those Garveyites who say that we should reject the term Pan-Africanism say that we are, yeah? Which I don't have a problem with. I'm an African nationalist, all right? Finally, as the evolution continues, because Pan-Africanism is uh, an ideology, a working idealism, yeah, um, as Mama, Queen Mama Amy Jates Garvey would define it, um, that is in evolution and developing, it's not fixed, yeah, um, in this absolute kind of way. We recognise that as we develop, we're going to get closer and closer to our goals uh, and re-Africanisation. There are some who are saying, as I've said before, yeah, that we, sh if we're using terms like Ma'at, and Ubuntu to within our definitions of Pan-Africanism, why are we not 
in terms of re-Africanizing ourselves, using indigenous African terminology as the primary terms within our ideologies. Yeah. And this is a inclination that I'm very much given to. All right. So some people say, well, Ubuntu is what we actually want to, is our goal, is what we're dealing with. So we should define um, Pan-Africanism within the context of Ubuntu rather than Ubuntu within the context of Pan-Africanism or Black Nationalist Pan-Africanism, yeah? But then um, where I'm at with it, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that we need to maintain the revolutionary or liberation thrust, yeah, within it. So brother um, um, Obadele Kambon, who now lives in Ghana, is has been instrumental in um, putting forward the terms like Abibi Fahodie, yeah, um, African liberation, or Abibi Tumi, uh, black power. My, 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 my big brother, Aunt Aku, uh, says Kem Shekem, which is in the ancient Medjuneta, the Kema II language, Kem being black, Shekem being power, yeah. Um, and then um, if we're going to use Ubuntu or uh, Hunhu, which is how you say Ubuntu in uh, Shona, yeah, um, uh, you would have Chumurenga Unhu or Hunhu or Hunhu Chimurenga, depending on how the grammar um, um, goes. And if anybody who is 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 a is a more superior speaker of the Shona than I am, do correct me yeah, in terms of which order it will go. Chimurenga means liberation war, yeah, um, in Shona, and so we emphasize the fact that we have forces, yeah, who are seeking to oppress us, and we must be conscious of that. And so we speak in terms of Chimurenga, not just Ubuntu. Yeah, in terms of our peoplehood, but Ubuntu is going to come about as a result of Chimurenga, yeah, um, confronting the geopolitical forces that are trying to hinder, colonize, and oppress us. In, in the in the Bele, um, this would be Umvukela Ubuntu, yeah, Umvukela Ubuntu or Ubuntu Umvukela, yeah, um, Umvukela being liberation war, liberation fight, and Ubuntu is ubuntu yeah and so i'm 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 i like that energy i like going towards the energy of using our indigenous languages to define our political and economic ideologies and we don't need to rush yeah um it's a collective process that's what ubuntu is it's a collective process and so as we evolve yeah we will find um you know the, the various different terminologies and those terminolo terminologies will become unified either through our shared understanding of how they are said in different languages, or we may find a single terminology or a single couple or a couple terminologies um, to use uh, in defining and describing those ideologies. So I hope that answers the first question. Are you a Pan-Africanist? Yes, but I'm a very specific kind of Pan-Africanist. I am a Mosaya Garveyite, eternally. I am an African-centered Black nationalist, Pan-Africanist. I am an African fundamentalist. I am an adherent of Abibi Fahodie, Kem Shekem, Abibi Tumi, Hunhu, Chimurenga, Umvukela, Ubuntu. Yes, indeed, family. Um, that's what man is. Having said that, the reason why it's called the Pan-African question is because man didn't just want to confine it to my own expression of Pan-Africanism, hoping to develop uh, a more comprehensive appreciation of Pan-Africanism that goes beyond just my own sensibilities. So I hope ones and ones understand that. Stay tuned for the next edition of the Pan-African Question coming soon. And if you have a question, yeah, if you have a question that within the context of Pan-Africanism that you think needs to be answered, please drop it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to do the research and come to you with an answer. Tenda Mwari, be thankful unto the Most High, Mother, Father, Creator of the Universe. Kudzai Mudzima Mukuru, give praises unto our great ancestors. Abibi Fahodie, African power for all African people. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe.